Right now on Sunrise, high school football and volleyball are back on for the fall. What's next for the athletes and you guys, the fans? And viral claims about RBG's empty Supreme Court seat taking over social media. Our verified team looks into how many senators say they won't be voting for her replacement until after the election. The autumnal equinox kicks off later this morning and it's rolling in hot. Then, bon appetit. It's a great new skill to learn. An online cooking class turning kids across the country into culinary stars. A look at some of their recipes and how your kids can sign up for free. It's Tuesday, September 22nd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning, 42 days and counting, 42 days away from one of the most important elections of our lifetimes, from COVID-19 to racial reckoning and now a Supreme Court seat up for grabs. This is your chance to have your voice heard. If you haven't registered to vote, today might be the day to do it. It is National Voter Registration Day. And if you're already registered, great. We want to hear from you and your thoughts on everything. Text us that number right there, 763-797-7215. We're reading your comments all morning long. I get a reminder every week in the mail, pretty right. much reminding me to yep. register to vote. We're also talking this morning about the first day of fall. Indeed. It is here. <laughs> Ellery, I know you love fall. Love you love it. the fall colors. And of course, the Guy, well, vibe. you probably love everything weather, right? I know, right? And uh, pumpkin spice, <laughs> ciders, mm -hmm. apples. Uh, oh. Fall is one of my favorite seasons as well. Nice. And it's going to feel like summer, though. I know, the trick uh, by Mother Nature today. Highs will be above 80. We're already climbing into the upper 70s by shortly afternoon, 82. Winds south today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Ellery. All right, thanks, Guy. Take a look at traffic right now. Things are looking good out on the roads. We had a couple crashes clear up in the North Metro, so no issues there at this time. High school football and volleyball teams are going to play after all this fall. The Minnesota State High School League originally postponed their seasons to the spring. Kaya is live outside the league's headquarters in Brooklyn Center. Kaya, what's going to happen next in all this? Chris, football and volleyball seasons will officially start on Monday. Now that meeting that the board held had more than 500 people joining with the majority hoping for this very outcome. So let's talk about schedules here. Football, first of all, is going to have a six game regular season schedule with the first game set for October 9th, so right around the corner. Volleyball will involve 14 competitions stretching out over an 11 week season. The board says athletes will not wear masks while playing, but everyone on the sidelines will have to, including coaches. The board says teams will do frequent temperature checks and rely on students to report when they're feeling sick. There's certainly some excitement from our, our student athletes and our coaches. I've been able to touch base with both my volleyball and football coach. And, um, you know, we've started some preliminary planning, but the, there's a lot to do in front of us. For football, if you want to go to a game for that, the capacity heads up is 250 people. Meanwhile, for volleyball, most likely fans will not be allowed inside the schools. Well, the kids are going to get their chance to play. Thanks for keeping us on top of that, Kaya. Well, as some high school sports return, as Kaya mentioned, we are getting more perspective from MDH about the numbers. So MDH says Sunday's record of more than 1,300 new cases, this blue bar back here, was not caused by a testing backlog. Instead, it's blaming the return to school for both K-12 through and higher education, along with other activities. MDH says it also respects the league's decision, but says it comes with risk. And this says we see a small uptick in that two-week average here going up. Now over in Wisconsin, the number of new cases is going down from its record of more than 2500 last week. But what has been concerning for a while in Wisconsin is its two week average here. As you can see, it has been going up since the end of August. And remember, fall high school football starting Wisconsin on Friday. Chris tropical storm beta finally arrived in force on the Texas coastline. This is a live picture from Galveston this morning. It's bringing a strong storm surge and double digit rain totals from Texas to Louisiana. It couldn't come at a worse time as thousands are still recovering from past hurricanes Laura and Sally. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A big day in court for Jeffrey Groves. He led police on a terrifying wrong way chase through the East Metro last November. Yesterday, Groves was sentenced to 25 years in prison for raping an elderly woman. Groves also led police on a wrong way chase that ended with Groves crashing his truck in Hudson. More money is on the way for small Minneapolis businesses still recovering after the civil unrest following George Floyd's death. City officials announced $7 million are available 
available to help. Some of the money will be used for demolition. The Commercial Property Development Fund, which supports minority and immigrant neighborhoods, will also get part of the money. COVID tests are pretty invasive and MDH wants to make that better. Today, MDH is trying out COVID testing using a saliva test. It's setting up a testing site in Duluth and is free for everyone. MDH plans to set up nine more testing sites like this across the state. A tough start to the season for the Vikings, only getting worse. Anthony Barr will miss the remainder of the season after tearing his pectoral muscle in Sunday's game. This is unwelcome news for the Vikings defense, who is already down another athlete with Daniil Hunter on the IR. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. All right, let's get to our digital dive at 6.05. The election is still 42 days away, but calls to vote will be flooding your social media feeds today because it's National Voter Registration Day and boy, we have a lot up for debate this November. So we want to make sure you have everything you need to get registered. So here are some dates to know in Minnesota. If you register by mail or online, you must do so 21 days before Election Day. If you miss those dates, you can register in person on Election Day at the polls on November 3rd. You must bring a valid ID and if it doesn't have your name and address, then you need your proof of residence. Now in Wisconsin, it's a little bit different. If you register by mail, it has to be postmarked the third Wednesday before Election Day, online 20 days before Election Day, in person by October 30th. And on Election Day, you can register at your polling place in Wisconsin. However, you must bring a proof of residency and an ID. Now, the Minnesota Lynx and Timberwolves are getting out the word. They're holding a pop-up event in Minneapolis today to help get people registered. The location of that event has not yet been announced. But as we said off the top of the show, I mean, there's just so much at stake this November from the presidential race to racial inequity, coronavirus, that open Supreme Court seat. I mean, there is so much riding on this election this year. I sure is. And I feel if you have a fixed address and mm -hmm. you don't register to vote, it's because you didn't want to. Because like I say, I get reminders like once a week. All the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, but they are having record numbers. Secretary of State Steve Simon in Minnesota said they're, they're expecting about 1.3 million folks to vote absentee this year. It's so. incredible. Yeah. It's huge right. number. Thanks, Ellery. Well, with this year's election being a bit different, we're here to help. Our online voter toolkit is live right now. Just text the word vote to 763-797-7215 and we'll text back a link. All right, let's go to Guy with our one thing weather quick. Sunshine at the bus stop today with temperatures maxing out uh, about at about 80, so no need for the fleece. Ellery. Hey, traffic looking good across the metro right now. This is 694 at 35E. A little bit of traffic picking up there, but no slowdowns to talk about at this time. Ellery, thank you. We're taking you live from the U.S. Capitol this morning. Sunshine already up there. That is where the body of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will be later this week, becoming the first woman to ever have that honor. First, she will lie in repose at the Supreme Court tomorrow and Thursday. Ginsburg died on Friday at 87 years old from pancreatic cancer. Now there is a lot of misinformation out there about the future of the Supreme Court following Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death. So this morning we're looking into this claim that four Republican senators already said they won't vote for a nominee until after the election. Our verified team is diving into what they'll do if they don't vote. The viral claim looks like this, quote, four Republican senators now on board, no vote until January on Supreme Court. It then lists Republican senators Murkowski, Romney, Collins, and Grassley. Right now, the Senate has 53 Republicans and 45 Democrats. It would take at least four Republican senators voting against their party to stop a nominee from being confirmed. This claim makes it seem like a done deal, but it's not quite that simple. Let's start with Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. She put out this statement saying she does not support taking up a potential Supreme Court vacancy this close to the election, adding that she had the same stance when it came to filling Justice Antonin Scalia's seat in 2016 and that, quote, the same standard must apply. So she's against having a vote, but hasn't said what she'd do if one happens anyway. Next, Utah Senator Mitt Romney. He released a statement of condolences after Ginsburg's death, but that's it. A Utah politician claimed Romney will not confirm a nominee until the inauguration, but Romney's communications director said this claim was false. He hasn't said what he will do at this point. Next, Maine Senator Susan Collins. She put out this statement saying she does not believe the Senate should vote on the nominee prior to the election and that the nominee should be picked, quote, by the president who was elected on November 3rd. Like Murkowski, she's against having the vote right now, but hasn't said what she'll do if one is still held. And finally, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. 
He shared condolences after Ginsburg's death and later released a statement affirming he believes the Republican Party and President Trump are within their constitutional rights to fill the seat. While some of these senators are against holding a vote, none of them have said what they will do if a vote is held before the election or inauguration. So right now, this claim is false. Yeah, and I think with Chuck Grassley, I think people bring him up because he said in the past, just like Lindsey Graham, that, you know, he will not uh, nominate, a, you know, a Supreme Court justice. But um, here we are now and we'll see what happens. You never know. Mm -hmm. Will they or won't they? At 610 right now, have you seen something online or on social media that you'd like us to verify? Send an email or video of your question to verify at carelevin.com. You can also reach out on Facebook and Twitter. A wild ride through the streets of Chicago, a guy on a horse shutting down rush hour traffic. Hmm. Then census workers have a lot on their plate this year. A behind the scenes look, the extra steps to make sure your community gets funding it needs. And how's the school year going so far in your house? We check in with some Minnesota parents to get a behind the scenes look.